Hey everyone, this is Ginny from Homestead Corner, and today we're canning meatballs. For this recipe, it's just a few simple ingredients uh, for meatballs. I don't do them super fancy or anything, just kind of plain. That way I can use them in different ways and I can spice up whatever I'm putting them in. So we've got a few eggs, parsley, onions, salt, pepper, some uh, strip of saltine crackers, three pounds of beef. And I have two pounds of ground pork. You can do this with all beef, but I wanted to cut my costs a little bit and because the ground pork is substantially cheaper than the beef. So I'm doing three pounds of beef to two pounds of pork. So it's a total of five pounds. And some minced garlic. Let's get started. So before we go any further, I just want to say this is not a USDA approved recipe. Um, this is something I do for my family and it works really well for us. So I thought it would be great to share it with you guys. But if you only do U USDA approved recipes, then this isn't for you. But this works great for us and we absolutely love this. So first I'm going to start by, I crack my eggs. I use four eggs for five pounds of meat. We'll just put them right in there. And I'm just gonna give these a little whisk so the yolks are all broken up. And it'll be easier to mix in with everything. Then I've just crushed up my crackers. Just semi-small. You can make them smaller. You could do it anyway. Um, I just kind of mix as I go. And then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Maybe shy a little bit. It's quite a bit of meat here. so. And then about a teaspoon of salt. And we use pink Himalayan, but you, whoa, you could, whoa, that's a lot. I get excited sometimes. And that's, that's about a teaspoon. But um, you can use any kind of salt, any kind you like. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of parsley. I like some good parsley in there. And about a tablespoon of minced garlic. And I've got about a half an onion in here. I'm just going to chop up real quick. And so it's pretty small. And then I'm going to add this right in. And then we're just going to add our ground beef and pork right in there. And we have got a big, huge, full bowl. So now we're just going to mix this all together. 
We're going to get everything all incorporated and we're just going to keep mixing it. Sometimes it's a little easier to just reach right in with your hands. You can wear gloves or just make sure your hands are super clean. So once I have everything all mixed, I'm going to start making meatballs. I like to use an ice cream scoop, not too full, but I like, you know, just about a one inch, one and a half inch meatball. I make them different sizes sometimes. Sometimes we make them all the same. Depends what our plan is. And right now I don't really have a plan. I just need to get this meat out of the freezer. I stock up when things are on sale. So I have, but I have 29 chickens outside that are going to be getting processed in a few weeks. So I got to get that freezer ready for those chickens. So we're going to get all these little meat projects done that I've been hoping to do. I try to wait until it's cooler, but you know, it's just not happening. I need the space. And so I'm just going to make all my meatballs. Just keep rolling and rolling until I have them all made. So once I have all my meatballs all put together, I'm going to pop these in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not going to cook these all the way through because they'll finish cooking while they're being canned. So right now I just want to brown the outside of it basically. That's my concern. That way they don't clump together in the jars. Um, I'm just going to par cook these and uh, for 10 to 15 minutes until they're brown on the outside. So we're going to get them in the oven. So while my meatballs are in the oven par cooking, I'm going to start the stock that I'm going to use to fill up my jars. And I've got a couple jars of vegetable broth and one of onion stock. And yum, yum. This is so good. And you can add beef bouillon. If you don't have any stock, you can use beef bouillon. That works really well also. Um, I, do, I, like the, I like this kind of broth, so it's really good. I'm going to put add a little water, and I'm probably going to throw a couple of these in too, just to give me a little more broth so I can make sure I have all my jars filled um, once I get the meatballs in, because it takes quite a bit of liquid. So we're going to get this on and heat this up to a uh, so it's nice and hot. So our meatballs have been cooking for about 15 minutes and they're nice and brown, you can see. And just on the outside, they're not cooked all the way through and that's okay. We're gonna pop these into our jars. Okay, so we got about nine meatballs in there. Sometimes you can get 10, shake it. There, so I've got 10 meatballs in here and I'm just gonna add my broth to this. Let me move this pan. We brought our broth up to a good rolling boil. You wanna make sure it's cooked really well and I put two cubes an extra quart of water and two cubes of beef bouillon in there just to give it a little more flavor and then when I use these from the pantry I take the stock out of the jar and I make like a gravy with it and it's wonderful over mashed potatoes or um, rice, egg noodles. There's so much stuff you can do with this. You could drain the broth and use them for spaghetti and meatballs, put them in some spaghetti sauce. I really like to use the broth though. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna just make sure we get any air bubbles out. These definitely hold lots of air. They can really have some big bubbles in there. So once you get that, air bubbles 
once you take your thing and get all the air bubbles out, uh, you can add more broth if you need to. Mine didn't go down, so. I always clean the rim with some just white vinegar, especially with meats because they're so fatty and stuff. You want to make sure that they are nice and clean. So, and then a nice fresh lid and a ring and off to the canner it goes. And I'm just going to continue doing the same thing and putting each jar in the canner until we've got them all done. So we have six pint and a half. These are pint and a half and a perfect size for our family. Um, that's why I do this size. So I'm going to get those right in the canner. And I like to add a splash of vinegar just to keep my jars clean. And I don't get that white filmy stuff on my, on my jars. So, and then I'm just going to put this on and I'm going to start this baby. And we are going to bring it up to it's steaming and once it's steaming for 10 minutes then we're gonna uh, start we're gonna let it steam for 10 minutes and then we will um, put our pressure gauge on and once it comes up to pressure which I'm gonna do 10 pounds because that's the pressure for my elevation um, then once it comes up to pressure then we will uh, start timing it and I'm gonna I'm gonna process these for 90 minutes if they were the size of quarts, same size as quarts, because they're bigger than the pint. So I'm gonna do 90 minutes at 10 pounds. So let's get this puppy going. And that is it. I got these out of the canner last night, but it was really late, almost 12 o'clock by the time I got done. So they've been cooling overnight. You can see there's a little tiny bit of grease, but not bad, because a lot of it came comes out when you're, um, cooking them in the oven and then so these are ready to hit the pantry they just need a good wash label up the tops and off they go and we'll have six meals ready to go this makes for such fast weeknight meals or whenever you're in a hurry or it's too stinking hot to cook which I have a problem with in the summer it's just way too hot but that's it if you like this video give us a thumbs up subscribe We'll see you in the next video. Bye.